The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Pray with me. O God, we place our lives in front of your holy word and ask that your spirit embed these words into our hearts and our lives to transform us closer into the image of the word made flesh. In those days, Mary, went, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country. Well, the angel Gabriel had told Mary that her old barren cousin Elizabeth had conceived and was six months pregnant. And Mary's haste to make the trip probably reflected her amazement and excitement at the news. Her trip from Nazareth up in Galilee down to Hebron, 20 miles south of Jerusalem, would have been about 80 miles. And Luke doesn't tell us how she traveled or if anyone traveled with her. But when she arrived, Luke says, Mary entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Well, now, that is strange. Why didn't she say, hello, Zechariah, to the man of the house? Well, we need the backstory for that. Zechariah was a village priest, and perhaps a year before this, he had gone to Jerusalem to perform his prescribed duties in the temple, lighting the candles, burning the incense, offering the sacrifices. And every morning, the priests would get together and they would cast lots to determine who would do what that day. And one day, Zechariah drew, drew the prize everyone wanted, lighting incense on the incense altar at the end of the day. It was just outside the Holy of Holies. And that day, as Zechariah was lighting the incense offering, the angel Gabriel appeared to him and told him two almost unbelievable things. The first one was that his old barren wife, Elizabeth, would bear him a son to be named John. And secondly, John would be a prophet to prepare people for the coming of the Messiah. Well, Zechariah's response seems reasonable to, mu to us. He, he said, well, how will I know that this is so? I I'm an old man and my wife is getting on in years. If an angel ever speaks to you, be careful how you reply. Gabriel was not pleased. He said, Zechariah, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, 
you will become mute, mute, unable to speak anything at all until the day when these things occur. And when Zechariah came out of the temple that evening, he was mute. And he, when he got back home down in Hebron, he was mute. Can you, can you imagine the scene when he walked in back home? I mean, there was no way he, he could explain with gestures what had happened, but he could write. He later wrote that their baby's name was to be John. So I imagine that he and Elizabeth sat down at the kitchen table and he got out a long scroll and began writing what Gabriel had told him, that he and Elizabeth were to have a boy in their old age. She never able to have a child before. You can imagine her eyes getting bigger and bigger as he wrote. She would later say to Mary, blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken, but she herself believed what Gabriel said. And in spite of being elderly and barren, probably taking Fosamax to prevent osteoporosis, she agreed to do what would be necessary, if you know what I mean, for the prophecy to be fulfilled, for her to have a son. And shortly thereafter, Elizabeth was pregnant. Mary greeted Elizabeth and her greeting caused the six month old fetus in Elizabeth to leap. It was probably the first fetal movement that Elizabeth had felt. In a first pregnancy like this one, quickening often occurs around that time. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit, indicating that what she said next would be inspired, prophetic words. And she cried out, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. <laughs> In contradistinction to, uh, to her husband, Zechariah, who still didn't believe and was still standing there mute. Of all the things Elizabeth could have said about Mary in that moment, she focused on Mary's faith. Mary's pregnant with the Messiah, and yet Elizabeth doesn't declare, blessed is she who's pregnant. No. She comments on what Mary believed, Gabriel's promise of a miraculous conception through the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth was in the middle of her own miraculous pregnancy, and she knew that it wasn't Mary's own doing that put Jesus in her womb, it was God's. No human couple could ever generate the Son of God as a fetus. She understood the faith it took to believe God in such unbelievable circumstances. And after Elizabeth says all that, you might think that the two women would sit back in their recliners and Elizabeth, six months further along in her pregnancy than Mary, would tell Mary about what was to come. You know, the, the nausea, the mood swings, the ankle, swollen ankles. But instead, Mary launches into what we call the Magnificat, a Latin word that means magnify. My soul magnifies the Lord, she sings, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. She was not speaking about salvation in terms of getting into heaven. The Jewish understanding of salvation at that time was about salvation from oppression and hunger and poverty. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. In other words, he has been gracious to a nobody. And the rest of her prophecies were about how God had done for her the same thing God had always done, chosen nobodies to accomplish God's great purposes, chosen a shepherd, Moses, to lead God's people out of Egypt, chosen another shepherd, David, to be the greatest king Israel ever had, and now chosen a poor, unwed, teenage girl from the backwater town of Nazareth, to be the mother of the Son of God. Almost unbelievable. 
Mary sang of how the proud and the powerful would be brought down by a lowly baby who would undermine the world's powers, of how the hungry would be filled with good things, of how the rich would be sent away empty so that they had room in themselves for more than money can buy. She was so sure of it that she was singing about it ahead of time as if the promises had already come true. Prophets almost never get their verb tenses straight because part of their gift is being able to see the world as God sees it, not divided into three tenses, past, present, and future, but as one eternal picture with all the tenses seen at the same time. Mary does not have a sonogram or a husband or an affidavit from the Holy Spirit saying that this child is really from God, now leave the poor girl alone. All she has is her unreasonable belief, her joy that God has chosen her and that God will be part of whatever happens thereafter. Old Elizabeth said, Mary, blessed are you who believed and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary believed that the Holy Spirit would bring Jesus into her. And the almost unbelievable truth is that if we believe, God's Spirit will bring Jesus to live in us, in our flawed human condition, us nobodies. St. Paul said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. If we allow Jesus to be born in us, to live in us by the power of God's Spirit, there's no telling, no telling at all what will come out. Because of your belief, may your souls and your lives magnify the Lord and your spirits rejoice in God your Savior. For he looks with favor on you. The mighty one will do great things for you and holy is his name. Amen.